Good morning, folks. It is Sunday, July the 10th, 2022. And again, I'd like to welcome you here to the First United Methodist Church of Interlochen. Thank you so much for taking some of your time to tune in and listen to a message, a teaching of the Word of God. Scripture says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So the more you hear the Word of God preached and taught, the more you read the Word of God, the more you listen to the Word of God, the greater your faith will grow and the stronger you'll get in your walk with the Lord. Let's open up with a word of prayer before we go into our scripture this morning. So if you would please bow with me for a word of prayer. Father, thank you for this morning and for a brand new fresh day of life. Father, you tell us in the book of Lamentations that your mercies, your everlasting love, your loyal covenant love, your mercies are new every morning. We claim that promise from Lamentations and look to you to feed us and to help us grow in our faith. Father, what would we do if we didn't have you? But I thank you we have the sure word of the Bible. We have your Holy Spirit living inside of us. And we have the Father in heaven looking out and watching over us and guarding us. Thank you so much for the relationship we have in you in and through Jesus Christ. Thank you for the free offer of salvation by grace through faith. And Father, we look to you as we get started this morning. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. If you would please with me turn to the book of Proverbs and we're going to be taking a look at some verses in Proverbs chapter 4. That's back in the Old Testament just before the uh, just after excuse me after the book of Psalms you'll find the book of Proverbs. And while you're turning to Proverbs 4 just a little bit of wisdom I'd like to suggest to you is there are 31 Proverbs 31 chapters in the book of Proverbs. So if you start out on the first day of the month, one month, and read one proverb a day for 31 days, and in a month you've studied and you've read through the entire book of Proverbs. So I'd encourage you to do that sometime. I've done that numerous times throughout the years, and I found it so, so, so profitable to stay in the Word and in the book of Proverbs. One chapter a day, 31 chapters, 31 days, you can cover the book. So we're going to pick up now at chapter 4. Chapter 4, and we want to look first at verses 20 and 21. The author here, probably Solomon, from what we understand and know, he says, My children, my sons and my daughters, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. So make sure you pay close attention. Don't let your mind wander during this time. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. For, and here's a real rich promise, they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. Don't you want an enriched life? Don't you want good health? Well, right here is a promise in the book of Proverbs that if we pay attention to the Word of God, if we hear the Word of God and then apply it to our lives, do what it says, that we can find life and health. You know, I think it's interesting that over in the book of James, it says, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. So we need to hear the word of God, but we need to put it into the shoe leather of daily living. And if we do that, if we live at the word, then it can bring life and health to us. Now let's take a look here at one of our main central passages, verse 23. Proverbs 4, 23. He says, above all else, so this is what he's really emphasizing in the passage, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Top priority, top thing to do, guard your heart. Make sure you're careful what you give your heart to. You know, folks, I think it's very interesting Jesus one time in the New Testament was questioned by a lawyer. The lawyer said to Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus responded by quoting from Deuteronomy chapter 6. He said, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, 
with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And the second is likened unto it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And then Jesus said, on this law hangs all the law and the prophets, on this verse. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. You know, folks, that commandment to love God and put God first is so, so important because if we love God, we know that God loves us. We can build that solid love relationship that will sustain us through so, so many years. It really will. I know it's easy sometimes to think, well, I love my wife. Or a lady might say, I love my husband, and that's who I really love the most. Or some people might say, my children come first. I put my kids even before my husband, or I put my kids before my wife. But you really can't do that because your children and your spouse has been a gift to you from God. You wouldn't have your wife. You wouldn't have your husband. You wouldn't have your children if it wasn't for God's mighty hand and giving them to you as a gift. So remember, they're a gift. Don't focus on the gift. Focus on the giver of the gift. And God is the one that's given them to you as a blessing. Remember, James says that every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from above, from the Father of lights, with whom there's no shadow or turning. Every good thing we receive is from God's mighty, outstretched hands. So realize your spouse is a gift from God. Truly they are, and your children are certainly a gift, and your grandchildren. But remember, your heart and your love have to be first toward the Lord putting him first in every single thing you do. So the command here is above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. So, so important to realize what you're gonna give your heart to. Now I think what's interesting is right after he says to guard your heart, the very next thing he mentioned in verse 24 is, keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. If you're guarding your heart, if you're loving God, if you're trying to maintain that steady relationship with God, then we have to be so, so careful about what we say. Scripture is full of things that talk about speech. There's a, a proverb that says, there is he that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. Make sure you speak in such a way that you encourage people, you compliment people, you build people up, you're an encouragement to that person. And don't be a person that gets immersed in gossip or running other people down and putting other people down. A lot of times if somebody doesn't feel too good about themselves, they'll try to point out a weakness in somebody else to try to feel better about themselves. Instead of doing something like that, go to the Lord in prayer and realize how much God really values you. Read Psalm 139 sometime. You'll see where you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And you're the exact person that God created you to be. Your height, your size, everything, it's all been given to you. Your body and your life is a gift from God. Remember, no two people have the exact same fingerprints. You're individual, you're unique, and you're important to the Lord. So make sure you always use your speech in a constructive and in a positive way. So when somebody's around you, they feel encouraged, they feel uplifted, they feel like they've had a fresh drink of water that you've done so much good for them. Another proverb I like is says, as cold water to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. You have God and answer a prayer for you, give him praise. Share that praise report with other believers. That'll encourage them that their prayers can be answered too if you share what God has done for you. Don't keep the blessing to yourself. Speak it loudly. Speak it widely. Tell everybody when God answers a prayer. And that can certainly be an encouragement. So if I'm guarding my heart, the next thing I have to do is to make sure I watch my speech. You know, James says that no man can tame the tongue. It's impossible. So it's something we'll always wrestle with while we're here in this fleshly body and we still have a sin nature. But I think if we work on it, if we pursue it, we can get better and better. 
I know a lot of times, a lot of the inmates that I worked with in the past had a terrible problem of using foul language, using obscene words. But they would pray, they would ask God to help them, and eventually over a period of time, they were able to weed away those bad words and communicate in a positive way without using obscenities. So make sure you use your talk wisely, you're guarding your heart, and you're keeping your mouth free of perversity and also corrupt talk far from your lips. Now, a third command is here in verse 25. Let your eyes look straight ahead and fix your gaze directly before you. Looking straight ahead, looking at where you're going. Folks, sadly to say, I find some people as I travel through life, they're always looking back at the past. They're looking back at something bad that happened to them and they just can't let go of it. They're living a life full of regret. If only so-and-so hadn't done such and such and that bad thing hadn't happened back there, my life would be so much better today. Don't let the devil drag you back into the past. I've heard it said, when the devil reminds you of your past, remind him of his future. He is bound for destruction and will be cast into hell for all eternity. Don't let him drag you back there. Keep your eyes looking forward. Have a straight path for your eyes like it says here. Look straight ahead and fix your graze directly before you. One of my favorite verses and something that I try to practice on a regular basis is in the book of Hebrews chapter 12 where it says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, keeping my eyes fixed on the prize of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it says, who for the joy that was set before him, notice he had that forward-looking thinking, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of his majesty on high. Consider him. So keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't worry about what other people are doing. Don't whether, whether about who's here or who's going there or who was at this service or who wasn't at that service. Keep your eyes on the Lord and ask God what he would have you to do. And if you maintain your personal walk, you'll be honoring the Lord, and you'll be living a whole lot more positive. Remember, the past is history. The future is in the hand of God, and it's a mystery. We have the present, which we have today. So keep your eyes looking forward. Get your eyes look straight ahead, and fix your gaze directly before you. Then he says in the next verse, verse 26, Give careful thought to the past for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Give careful thought to the past of your feet. Where are your feet going to carry you? You know, as we live our lives and we travel different places, we have to go to gas stations. We have to go to doctor's offices for doctor's appointments. Sometimes too many that you'd like to go to, but you got to go because it's part of what the doctor requires. We go to grocery stores, we go to visit children, we visit grandchildren. Be so careful where your feet carry you. And especially with younger people, it's so, so easy to be tempted and drawn away and have your heart pulled to something else because after all, hey, everybody's partying. Everybody's doing it. Everybody's having a good time. Take that before God and ask God where he would have you to go. Be so, so careful where you go and where you allow your feet to travel. Be steadfast in all your ways. You're keeping your eyes on the Lord. You're guarding your heart from evil. You're watching your mouth. You're trying to live with your eyes fixed on Jesus. You're looking straight ahead. You're watching where you're going. And then he says in the last verse, verse 27, do not turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. You know, I find as I've examined Christians throughout the years, I've been a Christian since I was 19 and accepted Christ as my Savior. As I've watched Christians throughout the years, I see basically different schools of thought about how people think. I see some people that get so strict in their Christian life that they make all kind of extra rules. There's churches where women aren't allowed to wear dresses. There's churches where women aren't allowed to wear any kind of makeup where they're required to grow their hair as long as they possibly can because lifting one little verse out of here and making that a big thing. 
and they get real, real legalistic and real, real rule-oriented to where keeping the rules is a sign of your Christianity. It's better to be fresh in Christ, to be new in Christ, and to have a living, vital faith than to just keep a whole handbook of rules. But then on the other hand, I see libertarians. I see people that are so uh, laid back and everything. They say, I'm saved by God's grace. I'm living by grace. I'm pretty much too free to do what I please. Well, remember, Paul told the Galatians, stay fast in the liberty in which Christ has set you free, but don't use your liberty as an occasion for the flesh. But through your liberty and through love, serve one another. So I think to keep a steady stream, we don't want to go to the right and be legalistic. We don't want to go to the left and be libertarian. We want to keep the path of faith and walk following the Lord Jesus Christ. And I think that's what he would have us to do. And then that last clause says, keep your foot from evil. Make sure we're not doing anything that's wrong, anything that would bring reproach upon the name of Jesus. We're living the life and we're doing the Lord, doing what best we can. So I encourage you, guard your art, like he says, for out of it flow the issues of life. Have a heart that burns hot for God. You want to know God. You want to diligently pursue him. Remember our verse from a few weeks ago, Hebrews, he that comes to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Seek your reward earnestly. Even here in the passage, life and health are promised through guarding my heart. Then make sure I always watch how I use my words. It's so easy to slip into gossip, slip into bad language, and find yourself putting somebody down. Don't do that. I feel convicted by the Holy Spirit when I start doing that. I know it's time for me to pull the reins in and bridle my tongue. Be careful how we use our speech. Keep your mouth free from perversity and keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Your gaze, your focus, your eyes are looking straight ahead, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. If you keep your eyes on the Lord, you'll be so much encouraged and if you keep your eyes glued to one particular news channel, and all you do is soak up that news. you got to have the Word of God. you got to keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Fix your gaze directly before you. Look where you're going, not where you've been. Give careful thought to the path for your feet. Where am I going, and do I really need to go where I'm going? Carol and I were watching a show the other night, one of these detective shows in this uh this detective named Joe Kenda said, basically, you're looking for trouble if you go into a bar after 11 o'clock at night. Why? The people are shadier, the night is getting darker, and you're in for a world of trouble. So think before you go somewhere. Think before you act. Be steadfast in all your ways. Don't turn to the right. Don't become a legalist where you're worried about making all these rules rule after rule after rule about what a Christian is supposed to do, we're free from the law. That's what Scripture says. But if we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we'll be naturally keeping the law because the Holy Spirit will live in us and He's naturally going to help us flesh it out. Don't get so loose as a goose that you're willing to let anything go on. Don't use God's grace as a license to sin. You don't want to do that, but you don't want to become legalistic other. You want to become biblical and as biblical as you possibly can be. And then you can only do that by opening yourself up to the Holy Spirit. Now I look at the commands of these verses, folks, and I say, ay, 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 ay. That's easy preaching, but it's hard living. And again, you and I cannot do it in our own strength. The prophet said, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. So if I wake up in the morning and ask the Holy Spirit to fill me, ask the Holy Spirit to guide me and direct me, let him live his life through me so that the Spirit is living and activating me and I'm living through the Holy Spirit, then I'll be able to keep these commands as it's the Spirit doing the work within me. I need his power. I need his energy. We all need his power. We all need his energy. Because it's not by might nor by power but by my spirit, saith the Lord. So trust him, 
believe in him, and make sure you keep that guard on your heart. We don't have the time this morning to go into the next chapter in chapter 5, but if we were, you would see that the author of Proverbs here, probably Solomon, basically says, takes a whole chapter to talk about being true to your wife and only having eyes that are set for her. So some of you men this week, you might want to read that passage to refresh yourself on it and to remember what it's saying, to not be a man that has a wondering eye, but to have a heart and eyes only for your wife as your mate. Because after this guarding your heart passage, he goes right into that in chapter 5 and spends a lot of time talking about how what you think looks so good can wind up being something so, so, so bad. And afterward, your mouth could be filled with gravel. So please take these things to heart. Guard your heart, for out of it flow the issues of life. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the warning to guard our hearts. And I pray each one of us would look to you to be filled with the Spirit each and every day that we might flesh out what we see here in the Word. To watch our hearts, to watch our speech, and be ever so careful to watch what we're looking at and to take anything we look and to make sure we gaze at it with the eyes of Jesus, to have our feet take us to positive places and doing positive things and not getting ourselves in a world of trouble. Help us do it, Father, through the filling of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for Proverbs, Father, that was written so long ago, over 900 years B.C., yet still speaks to us today in a new and fresh way. Thank you for you, Lord. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Folks, thank you again for joining us and being with us here. I hope you were blessed last week through the message and through our communion service. Take time to walk with the Lord and make sure you're having your own quiet time each and every day. There's nothing like having that fresh new time in the morning with the Lord and having him speak to you through his word. Be blessed. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.